Okay, now let's talk about audio. It's really important to get your audio right. That's stating the obvious. But if you end up with really bad audio, you can make yourself end up sounding like a robot. You can get terrible distortion. It can just be unusable sound. And it's really not that difficult to get the sound sounding good. But there's a few things you've got to know. Okay, so if I just take this handle off to begin with. So if you use the camera without the handle on, effectively, whatever you're doing is going to be recorded through these microphones on top. And you get decent audio, they're pretty reasonable mics, but you're not going to be able to get as good audio as you want because effectively, if you're doing an interview, your subject's going to be a reasonable distance away. So for general audio production in the field, by all means, take the handle off, it'll make you look like a tourist, no one will notice you, and you'll get whatever ambient sound there is, it'll just be recorded through the internal mics. But when you want to get a bit more sophisticated with your audio, you have to put this handle on because this is what gives you control of your audio to a professional level. Okay, so the handle goes on and this plug here connects right into the body of the camera. Okay, so if we look at the audio controls on one side, we've got the XLR jacks. These are professional jacks which are robust and basically are really the standard for how one records audio. There's other ways to do it through a mini jack. You can see there's a mic input on the camera elsewhere, but that's a lot more flimsy and a lot more prone to breaking. Whereas XLRs, they just work and they work well. Okay, so if you're using professional mics, you'll be plugging them into XLR jacks. Now on the other side of the camera, we can see that we've got various controls. First, channel two input. What that means is, I've actually got the audio from this microphone here going into input one. If you want the same input, meaning you're only using one microphone to go to both channels, you would select channel two input to input one. If you put that to input two, that's for when you're using two mics and input two, which is fed by XLR, would then be recorded on a separate channel. So just to reiterate, Put it onto input one and channel one will go to one and two. Put channel two input to channel two and channel one will go to one and channel two will go to two. Pretty straightforward. Audio input, you've got line, you've got mic and you've got mic plus 48 volt. 48 volt phantom powering is what that's referring to. Some microphones, they will actually draw their power from the 48 volt phantom powering on the camera. So this mic, for example, is being powered from the camera. So it's important that I have that switch set to mic plus 48 volt. Otherwise, there's gonna be no power to the mic and you're not gonna get any sound. There are some microphones which don't use 48 volt phantom powering. They're either powered by a battery or they're self-powering. So if that's the case, you just switch it to mic and not onto 48 volt phantom powering and other microphones will then work. I mean, you should know your microphones anyway, but if you're not getting any sound, try switching it to 48 volt phantom powering and very quickly you will know if that's the problem. Okay, now it's gotta be said as well, if you've got a mic that does not require power from the camera, keep it off 48 volt phantom powering because it can actually cause you some problems. Okay, and the other input is for line. So if you're recording out of a mixing desk or out of another device and you don't want to record at mic level, you want to record at line level, then it's quite easy just to flick it onto line and you will have a line input going into the camera. Now the other areas to look at is we've got auto and manual audio controls. Now leaving it an automatic is okay, it's gonna work well for you, but it's not ideal because there are times when automatic audio just isn't gonna work for you as you want it to. You may have a really loud noise and there may be distortion, or you may be in a, a very changeable room in terms of what's going on with audio. Someone's speaking, people are clapping, and the audio may pump, meaning when it's quiet, it raises the volume so that the audio is recorded at a higher level effectively. And when it's loud, it pulls that volume down. So really, you don't want your audio to be going up and down. You want it to be effectively reasonably even. So if you switch to manual, you can then turn these wheels to set the audio. And the crucial thing with audio 
is just to make sure that as you work with your audio that it doesn't peek into the red you've got indicators on screen as you're filming and you can see what your audio is doing if it's over modulating it's screaming into the red you know that you're going to have a lot of problems so put it in manual adjust the audio controls and wind it back if you feel that there's not enough audio going in you'll see that the meters are hardly moving the representation on the screen well in that case wind your controls up and something I often do when setting my audio levels is I'll put one so that it's just below peaking into the red and then the second channel so that it's a few notches down coming nowhere near the red. So effectively you've got a backup. And, and there's one other way you can do it, which you can put one audio channel into automatic, which means the camera will set the level and you can have another one in manual, meaning you set the level. So all these little tricks is what you've got to be able to do to get your audio sounding good or any of the other parameters that you wish to adjust. Mm -hmm.